Hi, you've reached a holiday edition of the Signal Watch. I'm your Yuletide host, Ryan Steens. For some holiday cheer, join me in our chorus of co-contributors as we give the gift of holiday movie discussion, talking films both nice and, well, less nice. We'll examine Christmassy artifacts of the 20th century, merrily explore the 21st, and try to put it all in peppermint spective. Stay tuned, we're gonna try to make this jolly. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I am telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town He's making a list, he's checking it twice He's gonna find out who's naughty or nice Santa Claus is coming Hey everybody and welcome back to The Signal Watch. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Steens. Happy holidays, ho, ho, ho. We are doing our 2021 version of Day Drinking the Movies. And uh, with us once again is uh, Doug and Kristen and Jamie and myself. And um, we're doing you guys a huge favor. Uh, we have just watched a little film, a little indie film from the mid 90s called Santa with Muscles. <laughs> um, so I, I, I've only seen this movie once before. My memory of it is for some reason, Doug put it on uh, when I was visiting his family, the, the McBrides in Lawton, Oklahoma, and we kind of looked at each other at the end and just went to bed. Yep. No words were spoken. <laughs> that was, no words needed to be said. I consider this movie to be in my top four bad movies ever. I would agree that I have with ever that. seen. Yes. Um, I'm fascinated by it in some ways. I now own it on Blu-ray. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How much did that cost? I'm not sure. I think more than $15. Oh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> How does that make you feel, Jamie? Not good. <laughs> Not good. <sighs> it, um... <laughs> <laughs> you want to do a quick recap, Ryan? Sure. Um... Of the plot? <laughs> he didn't have one? So we, we I didn't... dare you to recap the plot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to help. Please. Okay. Okay. Terry Hulk Hogan. Yes. Bullia, uh, the from, main the main character. The main character plays a guy named Blake Seven. Seven. I don't know what his name is. <laughs> He's a self-made millionaire. Yeah. And he maybe because there was a line in the movie about him not being a self-made but that he had inherited his parents' millions. He's a millionaire. He's I a thought millionaire. he was a fucking orphan. He There's started. A, oh, right. So was Bruce Wayne. I think, Wayne, I think that Jamie. Jr. was wrong about that. Okay. I think <laughs> yeah, they both blacked the out. Rich the orphan orphans period. don't start an orphanage. Anyway, I think we're getting off track. He's a millionaire. Um, he sells um, bodybuilding products. Yes, like GNC. Basically, GNC uh, with his face on them. Yes. Uh, very famous rich man. Yeah. Why Richest am I man, recapping this? Richest man in 10 states. <laughs> Richest, Richest man, man in 10 states, according to one character in the movie. Um, yeah, so a game of paintball he's playing with some buddies in vehicles. In vehicles. On City Street. Devolves into them being chased by the police. Curtis sheriff. Howard. Uh, yeah, the main, the, the sheriff, I guess, yeah. is Curtis Howard. Yeah. Uh, with the best hair in the world. Uh, and they're, the police are literally chasing them down the highway and he's shooting paintballs at them yeah and they start opening fire on them and we understand the california police are always very understanding of um <laughs> rich white men i guess yeah, i yeah. don't know maybe they knew who he was so he, he tries to lose the police by going to a mall and sort of like blending in in the mall as you do as you do and we're in full desert camo yeah he's wearing full desert camo the whole time and he 
kind of sneaks back stage at the mall? Or is this whole set that looks like it's backstage? Actually, wait, 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 wait. Ryan used to work at the mall. That's actually uh, really accurate for what it looks like. Like a utility like. corridor kind mm-hmm. of. Yeah. Yeah, okay, fine. Um, and he finds a Santa outfit somewhere, and he puts it on to his, you know, to bamboozle the police, which works. Mm-hmm. Conveniently, well, MIA. conveniently, the elves are missing a Santa. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, my question is, where is that Santa? But different movie, probably. Yeah. That's the sequel. <laughs> Santa yes. was smart and left before all this started. Fair. So, a guy who's deeply concussed... <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> he, he, well, he tries to hide from the, the police in a garbage chute, and he falls, and right. he gets a concussion. Yes. That's, yeah. So, he's deeply concussed. <laughs> so, he's on the second floor of a mall where they have the Santa suit. He falls down a chute to where they have the mirror... And the whole setup for the elves to get ready, including a complete tree. Yep. And um, the guy who was the redhead from that '70s show's dad. I take your word for it. Never saw it. Um, is an elf. He's an, one of the elves. One of the elves. And there's a fifty dollar bounty if they can find a Santa. A, any Santa. Not not that the, the wow. leggy person yeah. running them all. The oddly short skirted. Business, yeah. business person lady. running yeah. the Santa. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> she's like, "Remember me in like, this skirt." <laughs> oh, like budget Heather Locklear in Melrose Place. Ooh, yeah, like, very oh my nice. God. Budget yes. Amanda Woodward. We've got in this mall. Yeah, nice. Amanda yes. would not be caught dead. That is who that was. But yeah, so we got hundred percent correct. Yeah. The Paul Reiser slash George from Seinfeld elf. We, we'll get into his character <laughs> okay. later, but yeah, yeah that guy. He, he basically done. realizes who this is. He sees all the cash in the wallet, and he's like, for some reason, decides his scam is going to be, he's going to exploit the fact this man has suffered a head injury. He has amnesia. He has amnesia, and he's going to use that to his advantage if he can get him through being a mall Santa for an afternoon. Then he gets his 50 bucks, mm-hmm. which was the bounty for finding any Santa. Apparently, this That's man has That's really no home. steep for mm-hmm. Santa. Right? For yeah. The Especially for, for a movies. mall Santa. Absolutely. So, yeah. And so he's got Hulk Hogan's wallet by this point. Mm. He does. Yeah. Which is pivotal to the rest cash. of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Ed Begley Jr. plays a Mr. Frost who is yep. a germaphobe who has a small task force of, of scientists. scientists Bondage scientists. Yeah. <laughs> With terrible teeth. All of them. Yes. Well, not did the, the woman. woman have to no, have I don't no, know. If she was fine. I'm pretty sure the woman must have been the director's girlfriend. Is my theory um, because she had no lines, which would have made her cheaper. She had a few lines. A couple did lines she? for the a end. couple. No, yeah. she's like, I love spring. Same mini skirt the whole time. Right. Yeah. She, yeah. So she's basically wearing an outfit from like Spirit Halloween store. Director's and, girlfriend is a great theory. Yeah. Anyway, so they uh, they're trying to take over an orphanage, which is the last property they need for undisclosed reasons yes. at this point in the film. Yes. They see them physically torturing a man to buy <laughs> right. a shoe store. Because it's a Christmas movie. Oh. It's a Christmas movie for children. This is the most well-off orphanage I have ever seen in my life. Yeah. One, they only have three orphans there. Well, they explain that. They do explain that. They well, had more because, orphans. Yeah, they had all gotten adopted. They're very yeah. effective. Yeah. yeah. They still had a Costco box of checks. Because that yeah. happens. <laughs> but also, like, it's a really nice church. Yeah. It is a really, really nice good church. piece of property. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. All the time. So, the orphans include redheaded kid you've seen somewhere, <laughs> Mila, Mila Kunis, Kunis, and a girl who needs braces. Yep. Um, who has a terrible lisp. Oh, and, the worst and is voice. therefore adorable. Yeah. yeah. But Ugh. that we all couldn't stand. Nails on a yeah. chalkboard. Yeah. Anyway. And she's wished Santa would come and bring her something. Something, something Santa. <laughs> Parents? <laughs> No, no, no she, they love that. it there. They yeah, they there. do. They she was like, I want to stay here with all my friends. Yeah. Right, that was my her two Christmas friends. Wish. I mean... Yes, yes. Well, she knew Mila Kunis was going to make it big one day. Yeah. And there's a woman running the orphanage who never, I don't remember her name. Seemingly lives there. She definitely she, lives there. And Garrett Morris also well, lives but, there. Yes, Garrett Morris. Garrett Morris. Mm-hmm. And... Um, She's like budget Rene Russo. Yeah. Right. So they both have undisclosed jobs there. Yes. They yeah. run the place, I guess. Yeah. She's the Miss Hannigan, but nice. Right. And yeah. not interesting or funny in any way. No. Nope. Right. God no. <laughs> She's nineties woman. In mom jeans. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
so yeah, she, she's no longer um, of the age to be sexually available to Terry Hulk Hogan. Mm. So, so back to the Thank plot. Thank God. If I may, back back to the plot. So uh, back to the Wait, mall. There was a plot? Yeah, but that's what we're doing. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there, there's the mall, and um, uh, Lenny, the, the elf, has convinced the amnesiac Hulk Hogan that he is Santa Claus. Yes. And sits him down in the chair for all the children to come do their thing in the mall. And so he starts just doing that, as you do. Yes. You wake up and think that you're Santa Claus. And then two rando criminals try to steal a giant jar of money. Right. You know they're criminals because oh, yeah. one of them has a nose ring. And they're... They're, and they're shady looking. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've got dark hair. They're not. And they they're, wear, they're wearing LA plaid. Yeah. 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 And they've got New York accents, even though they're clearly in California. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So they steal this giant comedy fishbowl of charity money oh, by putting it under the one of their shirts. From the orphanage. From, from pennies. From my favorite character in the movie, who is a sleeping woman who's who wearing has, a cat sweatshirt. Yeah. And has no lines. And has no lines. She yeah. didn't have a grating voice like everyone else yes. in this movie, so I love her. Yeah. So the, the two criminals try to steal this money comedically, you know, with this giant shirt full of fishbowl money, and they drop it, and it breaks, and they're trying to, like, clean it up. And someone calls for Santa. The, one of the children says, hey, there's criminals. Santa, help us. And so Hulk Hogan, who thinks he's Santa, springs to action and beats the fuck out of these people. <laughs> he brings violence. It was yes. a lot. Like, it, that, this would, there would be a concussion, a spinal damage for sure, like... Yeah, if this really Santa will out. bring vengeance upon you. He's literally tossing fools through the air. Mm. They're landing on shit. It's it's Mine's not. Snapping. This is a kids' movie. Yeah. Is it though? Yes. Is yeah. this a movie for anyone? No. Oh. I mean, no. no. But no. I mean, they tried to make a children's movie. They failed to make anything that anyone wanted to see. But I think they were trying to make a kids' movie. Okay. There, yeah. was, there was effort somewhere. Is what you're saying. Yes. No. <laughs> Ooh. This could be the rest there of the There were thoughts and efforts. Somewhere. There was a minimal amount of effort. Yeah, okay. They made a movie. They made a I movie. Mean, someone did turn the camera. That had all the scenes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. It depends I've, on what your standards are. Yeah. There are worse you movies. Have them. Like, this it is, was, it's better than Monster or Go-Go. That's kind of what pisses me off, because it had a level of competence. Yeah. You know, so it sh- like everyone should have known better, and it still sucked. It's not like Manos or like, you know, something that had like... It had Ed Begley Jr. It had Ed Begley Jr. It had Ed Begley Jr. Yeah. I mean, not the best actor in the world, but, you know... You take that back. (laughs) He's been in some good stuff. I'm not... Yes. (laughs) He's been in things. And he was in this. He is an actor. (laughs) Fine. It's... it's, I have this whole thing of... (laughs) What happened to people who went to Hollywood during Christmas? Because none of them seem to know what Christmas is or looks like. I think that's going to be the theme of this podcast. I, Christmas versus this movie. Yeah. Right? Or yeah. humanity versus this movie. Because people seem to know what a human, <laughs> well, Christmas a human is... child, a human adult, anything. You were very that. correct. Human faces, the way they're formed. I think, no. I, I think another way to say it is, you know, Christmas and humanity are supposed to kind of be together. So, okay. yes, in a way, you're right. It's just yeah. humanity versus this movie. Yeah. But, this is, but since it's supposed to be a Christmas movie, it, for me, it's easier to focus on, like... <laughs> <laughs> how did they screw up Christmas versus how did they screw up everything? How do they not know anything about Christmas? Maybe they're space aliens. Oh. New theory. That would explain a lot. Controversial. That would excuse a lot. Maybe speaking, they came from the Crystal Cave. Speaking of the which paranormal. Which we haven't even gotten to. Should we wrap up the plot or does it even what? matter? No, it doesn't anymore? matter. Oh. We, we have to explain the Crystal Cave. Okay. Okay, what? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. So, spoiler, the whole reason <laughs> Ed Begley Jr. wants the orphanage and all of the properties surrounding is because there's apparently crystals that are underground that will do something. Do we really want to spoil this for the people listening who want to go see this movie? <laughs> you know about mineral rights, and I think they deserve to know that. Right. It is about mineral rights. It's about mineral Good rights. Call. It's really the basis yeah. of any Christmas kids, movie. Kids love movies about mineral oh, rights they do. and bondage <laughs> villains. Oh, and we haven't gotten to the stink gas. Yeah, there's a breath play in this movie. Uh, <laughs> that breath was deadly. Merry scary. Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Um, yeah, anyway, <laughs> fast forward, Hulk Hogan, who thinks he's Santa Claus, ends up at the orphanage and is... Trying to protect it from Ed Begley Jr.'s henchmen, who eventually who tr- keep trying to attack the orphanage with no to, guns to threaten them. They have like, what yeah, was that? no, Not no. A well, it's a kids movie. Thing? 
Yeah. Oh, they, it was a they T-square. Have a, T-square. They have the a T-square. only gun in the movie was one pointed by a cop at children <laughs> at the end. <laughs> right. Oh, was it a bazooka? Oh, there was also there a, was bazooka. a bazooka. The cops You're were right. firing on uh, Hulk Hogan's car in the beginning, right? You're correct. You? Yeah. I don't think we saw that gun, but yes, yeah. they were firing your gun. That's right. But yeah, yeah, I mean, this is... So we were supposed to do the Nativity story as part of this series of... <laughs> 2021 Christmas movies and, Wait, and Michael and I just didn't go it, it's the actual nativity story as a movie oh. starring Oscar Isaac from like 2006 or something what? like that why didn't what, why, that's Ryan? the thing that happened yeah. why didn't we watch that it's good I didn't hear about right. it as an option right <laughs> was not, that an option on the table that I just <laughs> yeah but it's not a good movie to day drink yeah you can take day drinking to Jesus very fair <laughs> yeah I okay. thought it was this or how soon <laughs> Didn't hear about the Jesus story. Right. So is Oscar Isaac's Joseph? Yeah. Or Jesus? Yeah. He no. I Jesus like is a baby. Track. Yeah. Yeah. We're with. I'm track. sorry. Michael right now is listening to this going, shut up. This is next year. <laughs> um so but yeah, so yeah, it's I don't know what happens to people because Jamie and I watched the first like five minutes of Four Christmases on cable this year. Yeah. And I was like, my God. Is that every- a homework? No, no, okay. it's it's Vince Vaughn and maybe Reese Witherspoon mm-hmm. or some other replaceable no, blonde. It's her. Okay, so I'm sorry, Reese Witherspoon fans, that wasn't fair to any of you. <laughs> but it, everybody seems to hate the idea of going home. Mm. Everybody seems to hate the idea of their families. Their families. They seem to hate the idea of actual Christmas, and they're willing to make movies about every goddamn thing around Christmas but actually and have it happen at Christmas yeah to make it a Christmas movie right and I don't know like I'm like who hurt you writer (laughs) and director of Santa with muscles because Mm. this clearly was shot in July yeah oh yeah yeah and seems like it doesn't know what Christmas is what Santa really is what children are (laughs) What elves are. You know what? I, I almost wonder if, like... Because on paper, it's like orphanage, children, Santa. Like, it all... It's got, like, all the, you know, the little... The, it's the, got, par- the parts. It's got all the parts to yeah. make, like, a kid's movie that kids might enjoy. Did the, Do you think it was always supposed to be a Christmas movie? Or did they go, what if he thought he was Santa? And then they decided it was a Christmas movie? Because that's... It's, like, barely Christmas. That's a good all. theory. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe it was just... But then they were like... What if we released it at Christmas, and it had Sant? And he thought he was Santa instead of just lost his memory. Like, right? I don't know. Like, that's how Christmassy this movie is. <laughs> yeah, which yeah, is yeah. you know this much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the opening scene of the little girl writing her letter seems utterly tacked on. Yeah, it does set it up so that she's pleased when he shows up, and they can keep giving her lines about thanks, Santa. Santa. Yeah. yeah, I feel like they came up with his costume. With the like sleeveless, the muscle the sleeveless Santa, Santa, Santa costume and first, belt. and that's what they wrote a movie around. Mm. Mm. Another so good is theory. The main character? Yeah, I would believe that theory also. Yeah, yeah. I from Mega Man ninety six, as Mila Kunis says, she has designed his costume and sewed it she, overnight. She does say that. Yeah, she is amazing. Someone had a dream. <laughs> yeah, she gives him a utility belt, which never comes into play. Never. But they're obviously like working backwards from trying to make money. Yeah. To a Christmas movie. Right? Yeah. Like, no one is making movies in Hollywood because they love Christmas. Let's get real. Right. They're they're trying to make a buck. Well, I mean... And if they can make a buck off of Christmas, even better. That's the fascinating thing, is it's stuff like Christmas with the Cranks, where it's a movie about, well, we really actually hate Christmas. <laughs> and, like, the Santa Claus, where it's about a guy who hates Christmas and has to become Santa. Well, there's a lot of reluctant Christmas movies yeah. like that one. The Grinch comes to mind. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. Right. Case in point. Going classic. Yeah. But there's a lot of different stories to tell. (laughs) This is not one of them. (laughs) No. This is not a story that ever needed to be told. These were not actors that ever needed to be seen or heard. But what's also interesting to me is at the very beginning when they're introducing Hulk Hogan's character, like there's no... They're not celebrating Christmas at his house. No, because he thinks he's Christmas a, is for sin. They're right. showing that he's an that's awful his, douchebag whose servants hate him. That's his character arc. Mm. Yeah. Which is less of an you arc. Get knocked on the head. Is, it's less of an arc and more of a just a straight line that hits a pipe and then falls down. Yeah, like, there's a clock. Yeah, he literally hits his head on a thing and mm-hmm. that's his arc. By the way, I mean, honestly, 
I've been drinking a little bit, but I did not know. Gee. I did not know that he had lost his memory until maybe three fourths of the way through. Yeah, the movie. we got that. <laughs> yeah, glad we filled you in on that. Sorry. Nope. <laughs> I think it's a mental leap that you have to make to make it make sense. I yeah. totally missed the scene. I don't scene think there's anything that makes it head. clear. I just think Ryan after and a I while, watched, you're just first, like, first time okay. we saw this movie, we were sober yeah. and it was easier to follow. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, don't worry about it. Yeah, don't, yeah. Why don't you tell the, to- the story about that? And you kept watching it even though you continued to be sober. I like bad movies. But this, you could go get is, some alcohol in the middle a, of it. not a secret. I'm, I mean, it was well. We were at the, we were, the folks' house. They yeah, they didn't have down. a lot of booze. They had yeah. to have something. Cooking sherry. <laughs> cooking sherry. <laughs> have you drank cooking sherry before? I've seen this movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's that was rubbing alcohol. You're right. Yeah, we should have just <laughs> put it on ice, son. <laughs> <pounded that down. laughs> Make it work. Yeah, mm, Johnson and Johnsons. Mm. I mean, you know, Ryan at the time were bonding over bad movies, yeah. and so you know, you know. Yeah. It's been over a decade since I've seen it, um, but yeah, I was shocked how much of it came back to me Ugh. as it as it unspooled. Um, that that was really the surprise to me because I remember while we were watching it, not understanding scene by scene what was happening, and I could kind of understand like now having seen it and then rewatched it, how the director and crew thought they had a comprehensible movie. Because they knew the story, right? So it's like, yeah, yeah, I've told all the parts. But the first time you're watching this, as Jamie pointed out... <laughs> you can easily miss a very key moment in the movie. <laughs> like, that's the whole premise right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. Because it's kind of a stupid premise, and so... Yeah. I, I said to everyone at the maybe 15-minute mark that this was the stupidest movie I'd ever seen. You did say that. Yeah. yeah. And you're not wrong. You've seen Ninja Turtles Christmas, Jamie. I mean, I don't really, con- really I don't consider yeah. that a movie. It's not a it's movie. Yeah. That was a TV special. That was yeah. a special. It's not a full length movie. So we're not yeah. judging it against that. But, but it's as a, a, pile, as a but movie, it's... I mean, I do consider it my top four, like, but why? That's a movie. <laughs> but why? <laughs> and that includes the only other one I can immediately ever name is Monster Go Go. Nuki? I've never seen Nuki all the way through. Because God I, has blessed me well, here. I think I know what we're doing season. tonight. I'm the only one at this table who has seen it all the way <laughs> through. So. Wait, Several times. It? You've never seen it? No, I think you showed me a clip from it. I showed you five minutes of it and yeah. you were screaming in agony. And vomited and ran off. Yeah. <laughs> For the bourbon. That is what happened. I saw the monkey sequence and I was like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the talking monkey? Yes. I think we're getting off track. Yeah. Back to Christmas. This would have been better with the talking monkey. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I mean, Hulk Hogan is close. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, he is a brilliant actor. So bad. I mean, it was pretty obvious. He was, at the time, he was, like, mid-90s. He was trying to get out of wrestling and maybe into acting because he's getting old and mm-hmm. whatever. He, but thought I think, he, he thought he was going to pull a Schwarzenegger. Right. Yeah, exactly. He that, was, he's like, know. well, he's a big, muscly dude who made it big and yeah, he's, he's a highly point, paid actor. He'd watch Jesse Ventura go off to go be yeah. kind of a movie guy and then politician not yet, I don't think. Um, like this was a path that was laid out. He's like, I am going that way too. Yeah, and he just, had a TV series. We talked about this while we were watching Thunder the movie and Thunder and Paradise. Never seen it, but and he had several other movies. He had uh, the original one was, I believe, his wrestling movie No Holds Barred, which I saw once. With it stars uh, Zeus Tiny Lister. Um, Sounds awful. And <laughs> then there was Mr. Nanny or something like that, or Commando Nanny or something, <laughs> aka Kindergarten, Kindergarten Cop, Cop slash. This yeah, Doubtfire. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> like, but he just he never could quite, and then he ended up back. In, so he never returned. I think to the WWF, and he ended up going over to whatever the other thing was. WCW. Yes, World Class Wrestling. Jimmy I believe so. Yeah, okay. whatever was on Impressed TNT. Impressed that time. you know that. He's from Lawton, Oklahoma, man. It so sounds like there weren't many channels. You knew we grew so up together, I, right? It sounds, like you knew that. it sounds like you knew that and you were just impressed with No. Him. And he, right. um, I did not know this at the time. Mm. Yeah, he, just he sort of fascinated. became then, he, so he'd also always wanted to be a villain and they wouldn't let him. Like he, he started mean, his, in the wrestling. He, in the wrestling world. Because it's all because like, he's blonde, you all, pick, be a villain? you all pick a character. Right. That he You're either a hero or a heel, right? Gotcha. Now, I'm getting some of this wrong, but. Plow ahead. Right, yeah. So. <laughs> But he, so he had become this like hero figure. And I mean, you have to keep in mind, I literally was going to the store and buying Hulk Hogan vitamins at one point. I have seen Hulk Hogan wrestle. 
No, from Far More, which was... Anyway, it's also where I bought my first copy of Ramones Mania. Um, but it, it was this giant pharmacy, and that's where I went and got my Hulk Hogan vitamins and my Batman cereal, because I was that age. <laughs> and, and capitalism works. Just out buying right. your own vitamins. And then when I was like 14, we bought tickets to go to whatever was going on in Austin, Texas at the Irwin Center for wrestling. And I saw Hulk Hogan wrestle. And I remember the next day in class, while my teacher was looking out at the room, I very slowly pulled out my Hulk Hogan headband <laughs> and tied it around my head. And I just kept looking him right in the eye as he looked me in the eye. And he was like, no. <laughs> he waved the finger, like those of you who can't see. And, and I... Take it off. I just took it off very quietly and put it back in and my that was eye. the end of your wrestling career. Yes. Aww, that's so cool. that's Mr. Bad. Mr. White... You stopped me from glory. I feel like he should have been more supportive of your, your choices, but... <laughs> Sounds like he was the real heel there. He was. So wait, so Hulk Hogan, the real Hulk Hogan, was yeah. was hawking vitamins and supplements just like... Cereal. His, so he had a thing that was his... like, say the prayers, do the training, take your vitamins. That what? was his thing oh. to the children. Great. Yeah. And be Santa. And be Santa. <laughs> And so we were... Get your head, be Santa. I wouldn't say, like, we bought into it, like, earnestly, but as, like, ironic 14-year-olds, we were like, yes! And so we were all like, did you buy your Hulk Hogan vitamins? Like, fuck yeah, I bought my Hulk Hogan vitamins. Were they chewables? Yeah, absolutely. They tasted terrible. Like Flintstones. I've never had a Flintstone vitamin. It tasted just like Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Ew. Uh, But I was taking them. Because my mom was like, if you buy these, you have to actually eat them. And I was like, all right. <laughs> I'll work like, out. When you bought them, you're eating them now. Yeah. <laughs> so I took my Hulk Hogan vitamins. I did the training. Um, I did not become a wrestler. Wait, you did the training? Well, I was in basketball. Okay. So It counts, Jamie. <laughs> you don't I, understand how this stuff works. Yeah. I didn't know if there was like a training program from Hulk Hogan. No, Junior I don't Hulk's. remember any Charles Atlas like training program from him, but he did think we should all work out instead of just watching wrestling. So, but then anyway, long story short, he did the acting thing, and then when he came back, he went to WCW, and that's when he became Hollywood Hogan. He finally got to be a villain for a while, and then he got the weird reality show, and then there was the thing where his wife left him for a teenager. And then there was the rumors about Hulk sleeping with his daughter, which I don't believe. What? And then yeah, and and. There was a sex video of Hulk sleeping with one of his friends' wives. That's the Gawker lawsuit that Peter Thiel financed. Go for so it. So I'm going to just advise all of you to not say too much. That could be considered negative about Hulk Hogan on the show. Merry Christmas, Signal Watch <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Peter is out there. He can finance a lawsuit. This is what Santa with muscles has done to us. It is Christmas time. I'm visiting my family at Christmas, and we're talking about a sex tape and Peter Thiel. That miss, is Santa with muscles. I miss Gawker a lot. For God's sake. But I digress. But the plot. The plot. <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah, like they go to these catacombs, though, and I'm expecting like yeah. decorations of former orphans, like skeletons, skulls up on the wall. No, no. We should talk about the fact that there were catacombs full of dead bodies under, <laughs> under the, the church. Orphanage. Yeah, Wait, there were actual dead bodies. No. Yeah. Okay. Wait, were the dead bodies the crystals? That brings me to no. my question: Why did the church explode? <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. you're getting way ahead of the plot, Jamie. That was Sorry. that's like the final scene. I mean, yeah, aren't we maybe there? Maybe she's doing the right thing. Yeah, yeah. There, maybe, so maybe they maybe say, right. oh, there's like the cave in the vault. Past the catacombs, like, by where the, the way, kid, where to- the kids play, where the oh, kids yeah, totally play. a disco cave, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. like full of like Night shiny lights cave. and no. yeah. What yeah. kid wouldn't want to play in there after they got past the dead bodies? But these kids who grew up in this orphanage are going to have a lot to unpack in therapy later. Well, I'm, more like I'm the two adults who unpack in therapy later. The two adults who apparently grew up there didn't remember it, so maybe they'll be spared and just not remember things. Yeah, there's a lot of amnesia that happens in this movie. Yeah, Hulk Hogan has amnesia twice. twice. Right. Talk but, about that, Jamie. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's about all there is to say. Really. Say, well, say more. <laughs> I missed the first one, in which you know it's the whole plot of the movie, um, but the second one is. Really, the first one because he forgot that he was an orphan, orphan at, the, at orphanage. the orphanage, but then he became like the richest man in ten states somehow. I, I don't understand. Yeah, all those 
the, the supplements yeah. got to him. I, I think it's... I don't like it. I don't think... I don't think, this, think this movie wasn't very good. Just don't think... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know what anyone was thinking who was working on it. I can imagine, like, there's the the British guy who's, like, Dr. Blight, which I'm pretty sure is also the villain in Captain Planet. Oh. Um, then there's kind of silver short skirt doctor, electric girl. Yes. Then there's the stink guy. The chemist. Yeah. With the extra yes. row of teeth in front. Yes. With the fake... Who, Overbite, yeah. yeah, for some reason, and that's the thing is, it's like the kind of movie where they're like, can't go too over the top. Please right. wear the fake teeth. That looks great. Yep. You know, in some movies, I like can admire that they're going all in on something. Yeah. And this was just fucking like if there's, annoying. If there's like, the wrong things. Like if yeah. they're self aware, like I don't know. Just I just want someone someone driving that knows what they're doing that can keep it all in check. And the writer did not. Do, did not accomplish that. And the director did not accomplish that. And those are the only people protecting us from this right. kind of movie. Yeah. They both failed us. Yeah. You can say the editors cobbled it together enough to where it was comprehensible, but it still has an hour and 37 minute runtime, which is approximately. Yeah, there is no editing that could have long. saved this movie. No, because there's so much story. There's so much fucking story in this movie. Yeah. And they, they not just a good story. too much for a kid's movie. Yeah. Like, it should be very simple. Right. And, you know, and, and, and you know, as a bonus in a kids movie, especially a Christmas movie that you're watching with your family, it could, it should be entertaining for adults. Right. Because then you don't hate that you're watching a kids movie. I don't even I think, hate that I watched this I, movie. I don't even <laughs> think kids would like this. No, no, no. No, it's for no one. Like who The moral of the movie the kids is might like some of the violence. What? Okay, real quick around yes, the table. What's the moral, the moral of, of this movie? movie? Well, let's start with Doug. Jamie, you think about it. <laughs> What's the moral of the movie? Punching. <laughs> GNC. So I guess Jamie's going first. <laughs> What's the moral of the movie, Jamie? Punching. Okay. I just said Kristen. That. If you're it's constantly moral... making a face like someone farted, you're the villain. <laughs> <laughs> um, the moral is that gems can explode. Ooh. Right. I mean, I, it was news to me. And some editing continuity would have been welcome so the church wasn't up one frame down the other. Right, depending on which shot you were in. Yeah, Doug, what's the moral of the movie? Believe in yourself, unless you have anything to do with this movie. <laughs> and then quit your job and do something else. Ryan, what's the moral of this story? <laughs> Christmas. Christmas. I just I was trying to watch the gears turn, and it's like they just jammed and like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good at asking questions. I'm shitty at coming up with answers. The bourbon. Um, I'm Larry King. We can move on. I have yeah. turned the tables. <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't begin to tell you what there the moral, is no of, this moral movie is. of the movie is. That's why we're all having problems with it. Yeah, which was, I mean, it, I mean, to get serious, like that's the problem. If you're an orphan, make a lot of money, right? And then go back to your roots and help the three random orphans. Maybe it would help to compare this to a movie we consider to be a good Christmas movie. How? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Which that's one? possible. Like, what's a good Christmas? Is there a good Christmas I mean, movie that? You okay, know? an orphanage like, movie, Bells of St. Mary's. Has anyone else seen it? Nope. No, sir. Yeah. Okay. That well, sounds old, so I haven't seen it. Half of us. Please explain. So, Bells of St. Mary's is about a priest who comes to an orphanage because the former head priest has left because he had a nervous disorder because the nuns drove him crazy. Wow. Merry Christmas. But uh, then he finds it's Ingrid Bergman is just a force because she's Ingrid Bergman and then he helps her. He they, they find a way to be simpatico and good things happen for the children. Excellent. Which is kind of the opposite of this movie. I mean St. Mary's does get destroyed at the end. I do want to point because that out. Because of energy crystals? No. Okay. no because I didn't they're think gonna so, level it and just... move into a nicer building next door. Cool, cool. Okay. Which is given to them by a rich man. I mean a okay. nicer building. Again the opposite yeah. of energy yeah. crystals. Yeah. Sure. Um, they could still have a cat, but it's it, it has many lessons about how kindness works, which this movie mostly involves. As you said, punching, punching. Mm, Wait, you said I think punching. Jamie said pie, punching. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Some more. yeah. Um, so okay. yeah, it's not exactly. Well, they, they, there's a scene in the movie where one of the children in the orphanage is about to use violence. He has right. a slingshot. 
Right. And he's about to use violence, and Hulk Hogan says, no. Like, violence is suddenly wrong. Yeah. <laughs> He's even been, he's been dropping fools yeah. for like an hour and a half, yeah. and suddenly like this yeah. kid needs to learn about Christmas and kindness, and he's like, mm. I've been like the kid. If I were that kid, I'd be like, what the? <laughs> I've been I watching. He's like, no, let's suffocate him with stink gas instead. It'll be slower and more yeah. painful. Right. Violence is only <laughs> fine when it's hilarious. <laughs> he's so wait, wait, stop, kid. That could be a slingshot. Is no. is this going to be funny? Yeah. You're okay, sick. proceed. <laughs> <laughs> I see where you're going with this. Go on. Yeah. No, he was like, no, don't do that. And then kid was, like, the kid kind of was like, but you've been like dropping fools. And he's like, no, that was self-defense. Uh, mm-hmm. Oh, right. The Santa defense. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, Shooting I guess they, the paintball gun. it's so. like they were writing this and they were like, oh God, what have we done? We need to like fix this because kids are watching. <laughs> it's literally like one line. Yeah. yeah. They're like, but, there, we fixed it. Now we'll move on. I think, it, I think it does speak to kind of what was going on with media in the nineties and, and, not to get like too serious, but that was the era where you started to like nerf all the media, right? For kids. Like, you know, we can't show this, we can't show that. Although this movie is still like, you know, who knows what's going on with the elves and the little hut and whatnot. I mean, nothing too shady. Just smoking weed. They're smoking weed and playing Gambling. cards. Yeah, they're yeah. having a good time. Um, but it, it does do the thing that the 90s did of like, we can kind of show something as long as we say it's bad. Right. And, and then we can get away with it. We and, covered our ass. Yeah. CYA. So, so it's all fine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It Santa was... throwing people out of towers is totally cool. <laughs> well, Santa actually gets thrown out of a tower by a plastic toy. By, the plastic by an animatronic yes. plastic by Santa. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And he's fine. Yeah. Spoiler alert. He ends up in... Everyone's fine. fine. Because he lands in a... Because violence yeah. is harmless. I mean, I think everyone yeah. else is fine. Everyone is fine. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. One, no one gets hurt. The person didn't actually suffocate from the yeah. gas. Yeah, the people thrown suit. through the air and falling out of like third-story towers onto cement are the, fine. They're fine. Yeah, the woman because who walks around with tasers on her hands who gets doused with liquid and then gets electrified. Electrocuted. Totally fine. fine. She's good. Yep. Yeah. Maybe that's the lesson. <laughs> My leg. Christmas violence is harmless. Right. Because of Christmas. Because of Christmas. Hey, Home Alone, because man. Of they home picked Alone. It, yeah. The next, yeah. next, next like year. That's they true. Picked it up and yeah. Very popular Christmas movie that really was... I mean, it's it's a Christmas movie in the way that Die Hard is a Christmas movie. It takes place at Christmas. Yeah. And that's pretty much it, right? I mean, what else do you need? The house is decorated. Kindness and, like, you know, the whole spirit of Christmas. Christmas spirit, like, kind of winning the day. Yeah. This is, this is like something just a reminder that we should all yeah. not... Yeah. You know, we should all love each other. Like, that's Christmas. Or if you're on the Hallmark Channel, you should have a dry single kiss. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And in, the, in a gazebo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah there's no and that's that is actually an interesting thing about this movie is there is no romantic angle that ever takes place in this like yeah, they not even close a right. woman they had two women they had fake Wait, Mom, uh, uh, Rene Russo that I was really scared they were going to hook up mm-hmm. with Hulk Hogan it would have been actually fun. They fine. did not. They're age appropriate ish. Yeah. They're age appropriate, but there I'm was. I'm both glad it didn't happen. No background. I'm kind of there. sorry that wasn't the plot instead of what happened. Right. Yeah. Because, yeah. oh no, then he would have had to act more. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, no, never no, mind. This she, was better. She would have had to put yeah. up with like a kissing yep. scene. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Yeah. Right. Yep. She probably had that air contract now. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a wrestler. <laughs> No, budget Renee Russo is not going for that. She they didn't pay she, her enough. She has a real name. I'm very sorry, actress. She was fine. She was fine. She, she was fine. I, I just, don't want to interrupt the structure of this podcast, but yeah. I just want to say that I, I one of the things I really actually thought was brilliant about the movie is they had Ed Begley Jr. in it, yeah, who huh. was you know probably the top name in this movie, oh, the most expensive okay. name By in far. this movie, and they had a brilliant use for him. They They basically... All of his scenes were on two sets, except they had him in a bunch of other scenes where he was talking to people through a TV screen, which means they could just pre-record it all, and then other actors would hold a TV while he was threatening An enormous, people. clearly heavy TV. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was the 90s. Yeah. No, it, no it wasn't LCDs. even like a what production monitor we would have been ring? using in the 90s. It was a straight up TV. Yeah, it was a TV. So they like were able to like record, you know, like a day or two at most of him acting and then use it in any scene they wanted. <laughs> just carried him around on TV. I thought that was actually smart. My theory is they had him for three days. 
Okay. And so they got kind of what they needed for the interiors in his office. They got those things, and then they got the stuff in the church in the cave. Right. And I think that probably was about three days. Fair. So, and I mean, good, good on Ed Bickley Jr. I mean, I hope that paid for another environmentally friendly car. So, mm-hmm. um, I don't dislike him at all. No, who, him, who dislikes I, Ed Bickley Jr.? Kristen? He's fine. Okay. Jamie? No, I like no. him. I was expecting an environmental angle, but that was not the case. Sometimes he just acts Maybe funny. I will say that. I yeah. forgot and I had this memory of the crystals turning into lightsabers. <laughs> Well, no. Well, at one point they, they did, have, did each have a sword. Pick up they they, they, they did, but I, sword fight. I, they weren't, like, in my memory, they turned, they lit up. Yeah, that would be because that would have been a better. good special effect. That would have been interesting. Yes, that would have cost. I think my... your brain was saving you from the reality of this movie <laughs> yeah. by making it more yeah. interesting. Yes, I don't understand at this point what the crystals did or were going to do or why Ed Bigley Jr. wanted. That's an excellent mm. point. They were shiny. I have no freaking idea. We were talking and drinking a lot during the movie. I don't think they ever made it clear. That was still my question. Why Mm -hmm. did they explode? Uh, Well, so the movie would end. (laughs) That's the the (laughs) the correct answer. I mean, so many questions. So as we watched this movie, many of us had questions. And some some of those questions were said out loud. And the answer was always because the script needed it to happen. And the movie needed to end and... They thought, we've got just enough money left to make this orphanage explode. <laughs> so, God damn it, we're going to make this orphanage explode. So it's a that's why the crystals expensive overloaded. expensive scene. It is. It's like, like it everything was a, else. It was a decent special effect that they mm-hmm. did not need to spend money on because it did not... The orphanage didn't need to explode. Again, though, every once in a while, the church would be back up. So there was not yeah, sure. continuity. In that was a continuity so problem. let's but. not forget the very conclusion of the movie. Okay. After the orphanage explodes. Yeah, credit There right. was more? They nope. are lucky enough to have met this really, really... Rich dude. Rich dude. Richest yeah. man in 10 states. invites them to live at his house. No, no. No, he no. Invites no. them Different to live at, at Begley Jr.'s house. That's at Begley Jr.'s house. We don't know where he is in the rich rankings. Well, fuck. <laughs> Wait, really? Sorry, <laughs> but his house had topiaries. You not know what? Cons. It's exactly like Batman. It's he's giving over Wayne. But like, then, like suddenly, there are more orphans. They pulled in some. They've extra, expanded some other their operation. Extras. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Wait, why didn't he just invite them to his mansion? Why? Yeah, why? he he he's sticking with his rules. He has three hundred and sixty-five of them, or whatever. Yeah. His columns aren't finished yet. Right. That's the safety. So hazard. yeah. By the way, yeah, there was some debate where we missed a shit ton of the movie because I was like, I don't think this house was done, and I think they rented it before anyone moved in. And then we were like, but maybe it was done, and maybe that was just '90s about the mm, columns behind. I don't think it. No, I think you're right. I think yeah. they may not have paid for it. They I just think, saw a construction site. I think and like they were like, set for it's an unfinished mansion, so we can film on it because yeah. no one lives there, and you know we can pay them a bit of money. Yeah. And then they just didn't care enough to not film the unfinished parts. Yeah, right. They could have easily like, hidden that. Because obviously the director didn't care enough to no. make a good movie. So this <laughs> like, movie whatever. demoralized the director as much as it did us. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah. Is it bad that I miss cats? Oh. Oh. You know no. what? No. I mean, I'm, I'm never watching. Okay, well, that's okay. a good question. Let's but go like, on the table. This wasn't, Compared this to wasn't cats. worse than oh, On cats. a one to five scale above and below cats, where would you rank this? Jamie, your hand is up. Um. Okay, I'm not going to scale it because that's, that's just... That's exactly what I, I just asked you to do. I know, you but you're saying, are, it. is it better or worse than cats? Yeah. I argue that it, it is better than Cats because it is way shorter. <laughs> okay, That's my argument. Was it shorter? How much shorter yes. Was it? Oh, half an hour shorter? Really cats wouldn't talking. stop. Cats so would not end. Neither would this. Well, cats is still That's going in my mind. Like That's how bad it was. But also, like, we were at home for this so we could talk during it. Yeah. yeah. Which made it easier. Yeah, we didn't have to worry about the like nice moms who brought their beautiful yeah. daughters to come see a Christmas spectacular yeah. and ruining their whole family experience. Like <laughs> this was a Good point. Yeah. I would say it would be like a one number difference. So the difference was we didn't have a waitress who understood exactly what was happening. I mean, that was who fun. was plying us with drinks yeah. all the whole time. Because my memory is I had four cocktails when we before we left the Alamo. I mean I tried to have five. <laughs> The I had, wasn't I had two, yeah. which for me is a lot. I think these yeah. are. But for this one, I had a Vesper, which if you don't know, is just pure alcohol. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's. I think what Jamie had was approximately 
three shots of gin and oh! one shot of vodka and half a shot of filet. Yeah. And I had slightly less than that, and then I've had two healthy cups of rum since then. Done. So this is sort of getting into... <laughs> yes, I drank some too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just... <laughs> oh my God, she's leaving. Kristen's just done. <laughs> this, this sort of gets into... <laughs> Just let her go. <laughs> she's she's freed herself. Oh, she's brought it's the fun. whiskey. Oh. I'm back. So Honey. I just want to say, I think it really is just comparing apples and buttholes to try no. to talk about <laughs> this versus cats. I just don't see how you do it. Cats just had so much more, like, gape mouthed. Ryan, I will pay you $20 Watching. to call this episode Apples and Buttholes. <laughs> Done. Okay. <laughs> Just cons- consider it a you know contribution <laughs> to your pro- budget for the podcast. But it does get into like this paper half a year of the signal live. Excellent, excellent. Happy to contribute. <laughs> I'm still drinking rum. Thank right. you. Oh, just put a straw yeah, in the mix. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I just don't this episode brought it. to you by Mictors, <laughs> a booze you can put in your face <laughs> makes bad movies better. But like, what what Let's makes down to it. what makes different like. There's so many bad movies that I've seen in my life because I'm yeah. a huge Mystery Science Theater fan. I like sought out terrible movies on my own. That's mm-hmm. why we ended up watching this movie in the first place. You've yeah. seen Nuki. I've seen Nuki too many times to count. Yeah. Um, but it's like, but you can't really compare them because they're all different in their own very special way, which I find fascinating. They're different yeah. levels of bad. You can never just yeah. say, this is the worst movie. Yeah. Because Every then you movie. think of the other movie and you're like, Oh God, that was also terrible. Yeah, yeah. that oh. movie didn't have someone saying "ring" when the phone rang. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. I mean, <laughs> for all, example, like there's so many ways to screw up a movie, and maybe this is what makes good movies so special, right? We, we they, did. They failed to screw up in in the myriad of ways we've all seen. <laughs> they can screw up. They somehow avoided all the pitfalls of these movies and made a good movie. We watched as a watch party last week a movie called. Adventures, Adventures of, of Bailey, Bailey colon Christmas Hero about a talking dog. And I don't think you can really compare these two. No. There's less racism in this one. True. Um, you, there's the you question can make of comparisons, like, oh, Chinese villain. But like, oh, right. Oh, true. But then they called sumo villain in the credits, so I have a lot of questions. But I think what you're saying is you can't say which movie is worse. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're just... They're out there bad in different the screen, ways but... I think so bad movies are really they're like life there's no like better or worse it's just different <laughs> it just is you're welcome and because that's what and that's what that Christmas way. is all about <laughs> Charlie Brown <laughs> that and the heap of bourbon that it took us to get through this movie <laughs> Cats. I, you know, Jamie's trying to stop. Jamie's the trying to stop talking, and we're not going to. No, <laughs> we're going to talk just, about cats some more. I thought that was a good stopping point. I'm I mean, willing to leave. Yeah, you're willing to leave. You can There's leave whenever you want. Additional bourbon in this bottle, <laughs> but please don't. Yeah, no. I mean, I, I completely agree, and it's it's a weird kind of going back to kind of my point of like what's wrong with LA that they hate Christmas so much. This one, like the the one that Bailey Christmas Hero is trying to I'm sorry, do, Adventures of Bailey <laughs> Colin. Colin Christmas Hero <laughs> was trying to do was trying to do something very specific where it was like we're actually going to tell a Christmas story of how if you're white and Protestant, you think everyone secretly agrees with you that Native Americans have their own Santa, and it's basically <laughs> Santa. So, Native Americans are basically white Protestants, right? So, <laughs> I disagree. But I, I mean, don't think that's what the movie was about. Okay, what do you think Bailey was about? I think that was like Dallas's version of being progressive, because they were showing, hey, there are other cultures, and they're just and like the us. way that they were saying there are other cultures, and it's okay, is because those cultures believed in Jesus. Oh. But they were trying to say, hey. We're not like, so different, they, you and I. They didn't have to put Native Americans in the movie. They could have just made a stupid movie about dogs. Yeah. But they didn't. 
I think I, they were. They thought they were being progressive. I totally agree with you. That That's they what they've they tried to do. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's like yeah. North Dallas progressive. Yes. That's what that movie was. Did they yeah. get into a history of mission schools and the imposition of Catholicism? Did you give them that? No. I, I didn't say progressive. I said North <laughs> Dallas progressive, like white people. North Dallas progressive. I've never been to Dallas. That's the their version North Carolina, I'll of being report. open-minded. It's like there are other cultures. They also believe in Jesus, so they're fine. But there are other cultures. Other cultures. They're just like us. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, think, exactly. I think we're, we're in violent agreement on, on this topic. I disagree. But, <laughs> yeah, but I. I, I kind of this, this movie, movie comes from some weird thing of like this weird disconnect of we fundamentally don't quite get Christmas that I find fucking fascinating in Hollywood of like jingle all the way, like which we covered earlier this month. Um, and and some other Christmas movies. But like, like like I said earlier, like I feel like, I mean, I realize I'm cynical, but like all movies are made to make money. Yeah. And so none of, none of them are made because people love Christmas. If, if they're, if they're about Christmas, that's just. I feel like I feel like right, but right. I also feel like the the people who made this movie had never. It feels like they'd never had Christmas. Like they didn't. They didn't really. All they knew about it was like mall Santas exist, and that's where it stopped. The the writer and director were clearly unloved. <laughs> yeah. Or do you feel like they don't want yeah, to show people orphans. the same thing they've experienced? They want Ooh. something weird and new and different to attract an audience because right. you don't want to just watch a home movie of your own Christmas. But. I mean, I think that's definitely an argument. Like, let's throw a wrestler in it and have him save an orphanage with crystals because that's unique. <laughs> yeah, I think. I, I mean, I like Doug's theory of this was not a Christmas movie and it became one later. They're like a Christmas overlay. Yeah, we'll make yeah, more well, money like, if we slap some bunch. If we look, if we look at the schedule, we're going to be done around October. So let's make it a Christmas movie. Because <laughs> like, put some candy canes in a Santa outfit, and this could easily have not been about Christmas. At all. It, yeah. it could have been it about have been a, a rich dude who got like, what's that? Would it have been worse or better? I genuinely don't It know. would have had less a whole other stuff to, to wade through. I'll put mm-hmm. it that way. I mean, there wouldn't have been like a worry about like who, why does this guy think he's Santa? He has to remove the beard. It's sort of a writing boon though to suddenly make it about Christmas. Like if you're having trouble with your story, mm-hmm. you put Christmas in it, it all writes itself. I feel like it There's attracts a, kids more. You, you have an orphan, you, then you have a scene with an orphan writing a letter to Santa. Yeah. That takes yeah. up five minutes. You got this that takes up five minutes. Yeah. You know, it just sort of like fills in the blanks. You have a unique like, take on Santa. Very unique Although you're take on Santa. skating very close to the like, none of these mall Santas are Santa, and Santa's not real sort of idea. What? Oh yeah. I don't know. Wait, it is back, PG. Back it is PG. Ryan doesn't know the yet. idea. The idea perpetuated in Hollywood. <laughs> oh right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. But Santa's. Yeah, okay, yeah. gotcha. Obviously, Hollywood constantly wants idea. you to believe that Santa isn't real, and obviously yeah, yeah. that's not true. Or what? Good save. Was the original idea that we want to see Santa kick some ass? I like that. Equally too. plausible. I mean, that's a different movie, and and sometimes I wish they would just go like for it. I wish they had leaned the, into this if that was the case. Yeah, this, they this, really didn't. I'm sorry, I've only been on the podcast twice. Is this the kind of podcast where we can just like call the director right now and have him on? Uh, I mean, if you have his number, well, Get it. no, I'm asking if the podcast has his number. No, we can just call him. No. Can you call Santa? No, That's we're just opinion. people in Austin, Texas who don't wow. know anything about anything. Wow. Unfortunate. Huh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. So, yeah, it's it's uh, it, it's fascinating to me, the, the, whole, the whole thing. And I, I think about this movie more than I want to admit. Um, <laughs> I'm glad I I'm glad I showed it to you. I think about it every Kinda. Christmas because I think about I think about this topic as we watch Jamie and I watched probably 20 Christmas movies this year. So many. You're ca- I'm sorry, you're counting Hallmark movies as Christmas movies? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Are those the only what Christmas else? movies? What else? No. no. Okay. At least one, two Netflix movies. No. You guys do watch a lot of Christmas movies. We've we watched do. some good ones. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Brooke Shields is excellent in uh, Castle for Christmas. So wait, so do you consider the Hallmark movies good Christmas movies? No. In comparison no, no. to this? Because no. you're like saying... Two. In comparison to this one? Oh. Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's a comprehensible but plot, when you even say, if it's not a good one. When you say Santa with muscles does not understand Christmas or is like the opposite of Christmas or yeah. whatever, are you comparing it to the Hallmark movies? No. Mm-hmm. Because okay. I actually think the Hallmark movies, that's a whole separate podcast maybe sure, sure. for next year. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. 
no, let's do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> no. But but they I but it, it, there there's a weird like let's not ever mention religion. Let's not ever mention like show anyone singing an actual carol. Like let's make this about the spirit of Christmas, which we will sort never define. The consumption of Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. And this movie kind of lives like perfectly in that stratosphere of like here's some Christmas symbolism and here's some shit you recognize and here's children and here's an elf who's a schemer. It lives in kind of like this perfect sphere of like not actually giving a shit about what Christmas where its roots are, what it comes... And I'm not talking about the pagan roots. We it's can go in, do that some other podcast. It's, well, it's, it's an tr- orphanage yeah. in a church, but you tr- never see a Jesus. Like, you see more catacomb crystals than any sort of religious... Yeah, it gets into magic, for sure. Like yeah, yeah. But, like, it's, you know, trying to make a buck off Christmas. That's, that's this movie. Yeah, in, which in, it, in it's, it's Santa Buddies. Oh. <laughs> Santa Buddies. At least there you get to look at a cute dog, even if it talks like a rat, like a terrible. I would rat. watch Santa Buddies a thousand times instead of this movie. I would agree with that. Well, we got a lot of night ahead of us, sir. <laughs> Guess what? And a lot of booze in my house. Um, it's only that, six o'clock. It's either that or cats. <laughs> um, bring it. <laughs> anyway, I think it's a perfectly good place to stop. Jamie, any final thoughts on Santa with muscles? No. Did you, did you find Cherry Hulk Hogan attractive? God, no. No, really. Wait, what did you say? No. Did you find Terry Hulk Hogan attractive? No. Really? Yeah. Who was the most attractive person in this movie? Yeah, Jamie. Oh. Um. Oh. Uh, Clint Howard. Honestly, maybe the sexy woman at the. That's what I was gonna go with. Yeah. At the, wait, at the mall or the doctor? The mall. mall. Okay. Oh, yeah. the a very yeah. important businesswoman. Yeah, yeah. A very important yeah. businesswoman. Yeah. Because she didn't have many lines. I think the fewer gonna, lines you have better, in this movie, the better off you are. I, I'm going to go with uh, Businesswoman at the mall, too. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's three out of four. I feel like Unfunny Miss Hannigan was cuter. Fair enough. She just seemed nicer. Know. That Businesswoman had, had a stick up her yeah. butt. Yeah. 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 She was great. <laughs> yeah, she did have cute hair. The mom jeans could go. No but... complaints. Yeah. Yeah. I like how that's how we're wrapping up this movie. Who was the most attractive? <laughs> I don't know. Person? Random question. <laughs> Amanda Woodward, business lady versus mom. Jeans. Something that I never even considered before you asked me. Yeah. Which character of this movie came out not in flames at the end of the movie? I mean, I would say Mila Kunis oh, overall. I take it back. Uh, oh. Cat sweater lady. Oh. Oh, she was oh, 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 the yeah. unsung hero. You were unsung absolutely hero. right. Yeah. My favorite. Can I Christmas change my Carol. answer? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm changing my answer to Cat okay. Sweater Lady. Yeah, right. Cat Sweater Hands Lady down. it is. The, the winner, winner of this movie, yeah. for sure. Christmas right. Carol. Well, everybody, this will be the final Christmas podcast of 2021, so we wish you a Merry Holiday. Anybody else? Don't see this movie. Kristen? Don't watch Cats either. Doug? <laughs> Don't see this movie or Cats, and Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. God bless us, everyone. Except Hulk Hogan. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pop, I'm telling you why, Santa Claus is coming, I mean the big fat man with the long white beard, he's coming to town. Michter's Bourbon makes bad movies slightly less bad. Not for use during cats. That about wraps it up for this edition of The Signal Watch, a production of the League of Melbotus. Thanks for sticking with us. If you enjoyed the podcast, we invite you to drop on by the Signal Watch blog, where you'll find write-ups of a wide variety of movies and more. We'd love to hear from you, so find us online and let us know what you think. Whether you prefer email, blog comments, or social media, we'll be happy to hear from you. We'll be back soon with more exceedingly high-quality content. So, until next time. God damn it, babies. 
you've got to be kind.